Okay, I took a few minutes to set up my webinar. Sorry about the delay. I hope you can hear me now. Welcome to my market roundup, weekend market roundup, 18th April 2021. I am Sagan retired IT professional, swing trading stocks. using Q systems and techniques. You may contact me using my email ID tradingprofitably at gmail.com. I regularly share live market and stock analysis on my website, YouTube channel and Twitter page. You are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer, this demonstration is for educational purposes only. I am not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. These are the Q systems I use for my live trading. They run on underlying trade station and Metastock platforms. I'll use the same systems today. That was the last slide of my presentation. Let's continue with the live system. As usual, we start with a look at the global markets. For global market study, I use the Q global system running on Metastock. We are starting with Australian market AXJO. Earlier, Australian market was moving inside a sideways range. Last week, it broke out of the range. I'm not a breakout trader. So I didn't want to take any bullish trade when it break when it broke out of the sideways range. In Q technique, usually traders wait for the price to pull back. It will be nice to see the price pull back to the trend line support. This automatically drawn smart trend lines called memory trend lines and go up from there, giving us a low risk swing low entry opportunity. Currently, it is certainly bullish for swing trading purpose. The weekly is also bullish. After Australian market, let's have a look at the Japanese market, Japanese index topics. This is moving sideways now inside a triangle pattern formed by resistance trend line at the top, support trend line at the bottom. If you see closely for last several days, price is almost unchanged. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For nine days in a row, price has not changed at all. That is extremely narrow range price move not a point where I would like to buy or short. I would rather wait for price to break out to the upside or to the downside to be clearer about the direction and then take my swing trades following that direction. What about China market, CSI 300 index? As I showed in the last webinar also, CSI 300 is continuing to move inside the triangle pattern. Again, if you look closely for last one, two, three, four, five, for last five days, that is for the entire week, CSI 300 is almost unchanged. 
Both Japanese market and Chinese market are moving in extremely narrow ranges. This may be a precursor to a larger move. However, we don't know which direction it will go. I'll avoid trading for the time being unless it can break out of the triangle pattern. Let's now look at the UK's FTSE index. UK's FTSE was moving inside a range. In this case, the range was bound by watermark resistance at the top and both watermark support and trend line support at the bottom. It has slightly gone out of the watermark resistance level. Again, I would like to wait for price to pull back, preferably to the trend line support and then go up again giving me a low risk swing low buying opportunity. It is bullish in both weekly and daily charts. Now let's look at India's Nifty 50. This is moving sideways again inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart. And here, if you look at the weekly chart, price is moving inside an extremely narrow range. Again, I will wait for price to break out in either direction and then take trade in that direction. Several of the global markets are now moving sideways inside triangle patterns. And several of them are also moving inside extremely narrow ranges. Let's see what is happening in the USA market. For USA market, I will use Q Elite running on TradeStation. Let's start with a look at S&P 500 index. Not index. We could look at the index also, but let's use the ETF SPY. This is clearly bullish. The weekly Backdrop color is cyan for one, two, three, four weeks in a row. The first of those four weeks reversed from near the trend line support. When price was in the swing low area in the daily chart, since then I was starting to buy stocks. And when price came to the upper boundary, that was the time others started to become bullish and I started to book partial profit in my swing trades that I entered earlier. And I could continue to hold partial position with trailing stop. Since the time price hit the upper boundary and the stretch band indicator showed that the price was already overbought, I was reluctant to take new long trades unless the stocks were in an industry that was starting to go up after prolonged downtrend. The stocks that were moving with the market from the swing low, they already got overbought when SPI came to the upper boundary and I avoided buying overbought stocks from that point onward. At the right edge also price is overbought. The stretch band indicator is overbought for many days. I will avoid buying stocks, but I will continue to hold the long positions that I entered earlier. I might have booked partial profit. I would like to continue to hold the remaining position with trailing stop trying to let profit run. SPY is not showing any weakness. What about the other market ETFs? Mm 
SPI, SPY made a new all-time high. We saw that and QQQ also made a new all-time high. Just this week, SPY made new all-time high earlier than QQQ. At the right stage, both daily and weekly for QQQ are also bullish. The DIA, this chart is very similar to SPY. It's continuing to make new all-time highs for several days. Both weekly and daily are bullish. And lastly, IWM. IWM is lagging the other market ETFs. Here the weekly is moving inside a narrow range. Weekly backdrop color is bearish. This is the only market ETF where the backdrop color is bearish. And the daily is moving inside a range bound by watermark resistance and trend line support as well as watermark support. Price is right in the middle of the sideways range. That is not an area where Q traders like to take a position. They could take a position when price came to the lower end of the range. But now they would not like to take a position because it is right in the middle of the range. This is the weakest of the market ETFs also shown by the relative performance line sharply tilting down. IWM represents small cap stocks. Other than small cap stocks, the market seems pretty bullish. Is that bullish net bullishness reflected in sector industry strength also? Let's have a look. Let's start with a bucket analysis. If you took all the stocks in S&P 1500, calculated their normal price range. Of course, each stock's normal price range would be different, but every stock would have its own normal price range. And then you broke down those normal price ranges into 10 equidistance blocks or buckets. You numbered them one to 10 and started dropping all the stocks in those buckets, one to 10, depending on where in their normal price range they are. If they are at the uppermost bucket, you would drop them in bucket 10. If they are in the lowermost bucket, you would drop them in bucket one, so on and so forth. These are equidistant buckets created from the normal price movement of each of the S&P 1500 stocks. Then you could calculate percentages and check the distribution of the stocks across the buckets. Some stocks would be above the highest bucket. They are beyond their normal range to the upside. Those stocks are going to this additional bucket greater than 10 and some stocks may be below their normal price range those stocks would go into the bucket less than zero. So there are total 12 buckets. And then you calculate percentage of stocks in each of the buckets and get this bucket percentage analysis. Day one versus day two. That is the last trading day versus the previous trading day. How to use it? When price starts to move up, the stocks will start to go from the left side to the right side in the bucket analysis. And when the percentage of stocks in the uppermost bucket becomes 30, 40%, then the market as a whole is extremely overbought, extended. 
and you would expect a pullback from there. What is the current percentage of stocks in the uppermost bucket? It's just 9.6. That does not show the overbought condition from where pullback is expected. Another observation I have made is that on a single day based on real time analysis, if the percentage of stocks in the uppermost bucket jumps from a lower number to higher number jumps by more than 10 15%, then such a jump may also lead to a pullback because the jump is sudden. In this case, the jump is from 2.6% to 9.6. So the difference is about seven points. That is not too severe. So when we look at the bucket jump in the most extreme bucket, percentage jump in the most extreme bucket, that is also not saying it is expecting a pullback. And if we see the percentage of stocks in the uppermost bucket, that is also not so extremely high that is saying a pullback is imminent. So bucket analysis is not saying a pullback is imminent. Now, if we look at the percentage of stocks above the midpoint of the bucket, that is 81%. That is a bullish market. It is getting overbought. But the overbought condition is not in the most extreme bucket. It is in the immediate following buckets, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It is getting close to being overbought because 81% of the stocks are above the midline of the buckets. This is bullish. There is no indication from bucket analysis that it is going to lead to a pullback. That was an aggregate view of the market. Now let's look at sector industry stock advanced decline using this very useful multi-period analysis. One month to one day, sector advanced decline, industry advanced decline, and stock advanced decline. One month period had been bullish almost forever. For only one or two days, it turned bearish in the middle and then immediately went back to being bullish. And all the other periods are also bullish now. In Q systems, green cyan represents bullishness, red magenta bearishness. Just by looking at the color coded by charts, we know whether you are looking at one month period or one day Friday, last Friday's period, everything is bullish and everything in between is also bullish. There is no weakness in this sector industry stock advanced decline graph. If we look at Friday performance, 10 sectors were up. This is showing sector performance, comparing the sectors performance over one day and two day periods. Over one day, that is Friday, 10 sectors up, one down. Over two day period, that is Thursday, Friday. Also 10 sectors up, one down. Which one is down? For both the periods, it is energy. All the other sectors are up. That is a bullish picture. If we take another step back, Look at the sector performance over longer periods. Compare the five day performance with 10 day and one month. Over five days, all sectors are up. 11 out of 11 sectors are up. Over 10 days, 10 are up, one is down. Over one month, nine up, two down. Which ones are down over one month period? Energy and communication services. Over 10 days and 
five days other than energy everything is up and they are up for a long time by significant percentages several of the sectors are up by significant percentages so the market is getting overbought there is no sign of imminent reversal but it is getting overbought the sectors are going up and up for a considerable number of days that is a time not to keep on buying probably we saw spy and the other market etfs other than iwm all were overbought we see from the bucket analysis also it is getting overbought sector performance is also showing that sectors are going up for quite a long time it may be a time for a pullback how far again there is no sign of imminent reversal yet not from the studies we made so far let's make some more analysis of the market and this time using technical breadth using q finder i am looking at the technical breadth of my stock universe that is all liquid stocks plus s&p 1500 it has more than 2000 stocks first i am looking at the weekly period the balance between bears and bulls using technical signals this is called technical breadth if we look at all the signals it is bullish 79 percent bullish strength signals 83 percent bullish trend continuation 79 percent and trend reversal also 79 percent therefore the weekly period is clearly bullish and if we look at the daily interval friday's period the reversal signals are 50 50 mixed all the other categories are bullish whether it is all signals strength signals or trend continuation signals the technical breadth weekly period as well as daily period they are also showing bullishness and there are not enough reversal signals neither on the daily period nor on the weekly period not bearish reversals bearish reversals would be in red or magenta color the bearish reversals are not so many in weekly or daily periods that is not showing any imminent sign of reversal as you have seen in the past when the market is too overbought the q finder starts to show larger and larger number of bearish headwinds they are unique reversal signals that often help us identify a topping point tipping point at the top however that has not appeared this time so far neither in the weekly period and if i look at the daily period neither in the daily period also again it is overbought but there is no imminent sign of reversal even from the technical breadth another way i look at the market using q systems is market internals there are several studies let's look at few of them let's look at the mega caps first using the q custom index mega cap top 20 as usual using the weekly daily interval for a long time the mega caps were inside a sideways range then they broke out to the upside it is overbought now as usual i would not buy when price is overbought i would rather wait for price to pull back preferably to the trend line support and start to go up again giving me a swing low low risk buying opportunity right now it is bullish however overbought and also daily chart has shown a large number of 
indecision candles at the top. That is another reason I would not buy the mega caps now. In any case, because it is already overbought, even if the indecision signals didn't come, I would avoid buying mega caps now. Let's look at the market internals using the major indices and see if there is any sign of bearish divergence in the internals. Here I am looking at the four major indices. Dow Jones Industrials. NASDAQ 100, S&P 1500 and S&P 500. And let's look at their internals, new high low, advanced decline, up down volume. New high low for the four major indices, they have been bullish forever. They have never turned bearish. Earlier, there were bearish divergences in advanced decline and up down volume in all the major indices. However, now they are all bullish. That bearish divergence had already played out as I mentioned in previous webinars. Currently, the advanced decline and up down volume for all the four major indices, they are bullish. There is no sign of imminent reversal even from that point of view. We could look at the Position of the underlying stocks relative to the major moving averages 50 day period, 200 day period, and also stocks where 50 day moving average is above 200 day. But instead of spending time on this major market study, let's look at the other extremely useful study Q market breadth total view. This single market breadth total view study combines insights from two composites, the entire exchanges, NASDAQ and NYSC, very broad insight. And then the four major indices, S&P 1500, 500, NASDAQ 100 and DJI. Here, let's look at the moving average internals. Percentage of stocks where 50 MA above 200 MA. That is the slowest of this moving average studies that rolled over later than the other studies and it has not gone above the average line yet. Average line is the thin white line. That is fine because this is the slowest of the three MA studies. The fastest one is percentage of stocks where Price is above 50 day moving average that rolled over earlier one time, two time, three time. Now starting to go up, but it is yet to recover to the average line or go above the average line. It has not done that yet. And the same is true when you look at the percentage of stocks above 200 MA. And again, this is a study these three lines, everything on these charts are studies based on two composites and four major indices. That is a bit surprising, isn't it? The candle chart here is of SPY that keeps on making new and new all-time highs. However, when we look at these internals, percentage of stocks above 50 MA and percentage of stocks above 200 MA, that has not recovered to earlier levels, far from there. 
and they have not even gone above the average lines. That is a sign of caution that under, under the hood, all the stocks are not so strong. Now, usually when there is a sharp market drop, it is preceded by distribution days and distribution count of two or more. The last distribution count was here. That was only one. After that, there was an accumulation count. For a large number of days, there is neither accumulation nor distribution. And these accumulation distributions are calculated again based on the six indices to composites for major indices, looking at how many stocks are going up and with what kind of activity they are going up. So price is gradually moving up for SPY, but there is neither any accumulation, no accumulation day, major accumulation day. And there is no sign of imminent reversal because there is no distribution count as well. In the weekly, we see the same picture. Price is going up, but no accumulation or distribution for last one, two, three weeks. No sign of imminent reversal, even from this point of view. Now we completed the study of the market level, the most important level in trading. If the market level analysis is correct, then it is much easier to make profit trading stocks. How? By trading in the direction of the market. We looked at the global markets. Global markets, many of them are moving sideways. Some of them are moving in extremely narrow ranges that may lead to a large sized move in either direction. We don't know which direction. USA market, if we look at the ETFs, other than IWM, small caps, all the other market ETFs are bullish. Made new all time highs this way. When we look at the bucket analysis, it is bullish, getting overbought, but there is no sign of extreme move yet. When we look at sector industry stock advanced decline breadth, it is bullish. Whether you look at one day period, two day, five day, 10 day, one month, everything is bullish. When we looked at the sector percentage moves, the sectors are going up steadily for many days. Whether we look at one day period, two day period, five day, 10 day, one month period. They are continuously going up. Therefore, they are becoming overbought, though there is no sign of reversal yet. And then we looked at the market internals, first using the advanced decline up-down volume, new high-low, and then how the stocks are moving relative to the major moving averages. And thirdly, looking at the accumulation distribution count. Only one study is showing some concern, that is how the stocks are moving relative to the 50 and 200 day moving averages. Other than that, there is no sign of caution, no sign of imminent reversal anywhere. Sign of caution is there because the market is overbought, but there is no sign of imminent reversal. This market is bullish. That I mentioned previous week also, or maybe even the week before that also. And last webinar also, I mentioned it is overbought and that view is continuing. It just got more overbought. I am going to refrain from taking many new long trades. However, I have already taken a few trades and I'm going to continue to hold them. I will review some of them, but before that, let me show you something I'm developing. I already released the seasonality study where you could take any stock in any country in the world and look at its seasonality for the entire year. Of course, you will probably look at the current month or the immediate following month more 
but seasonality tool helps you look at the any month any month of the year whether it was predominantly bullish or predominantly bearish or anywhere in between by studying years and years of data, 20 years of data. That was for each stock. And after I released it, I got input from several of the Q traders that why don't I extend it so that people could look at their stock trading universe and then quickly find out which of those stocks in their trading universe have strong bullish seasonality in the current month or maybe in the following month also. So I'm working on that. Here I ran the enhanced Q seasonality program on S&P 1500 stocks. Once released, you could run it on any symbol universe of your interest. Liquid stocks, high growth stocks, and it is not limited to only USA market, just like other Q tools. This tool will also be applicable to any country in the world, any market in the world. Here I ran it on S&P 1500 stocks. You can see real time. And then I sorted the data by April's seasonality. And these are the stocks that are having 100% bullish seasonality in the current month. If you are bullish, you could look at them. As I mentioned, the market is overbought. So instead of just looking at the stocks based on this seasonality, what you could do, you could look up the industry of these stocks first using QH and see if the industry rotation is showing bullishness. If the industry rotation is showing bullishness, maybe it was underperforming earlier, now it is starting to go up and you see the stock's seasonality is also very bullish, then you could look for a low risk Q technical buy setup. Let's look at one of the well-known stocks, Dow. Dow has 100% bullish seasonality in the current month. So has Fox, F-O-X-A or F-O-X. Let's look at two of them, Dow, D-O-W and F-O-X-A. Let me open the seasonality tool also. Now, first I'm going to check out the industry of Dow. Let me use Cube Vital for that. That will also help me carry out a peer analysis and fundamental scorecard analysis to see if Dow is fundamentally strong now, DOW.N. Seasonality is bullish, but I would like to buy only if the stock is in a strong industry currently and also preferably its fundamentals are strong. I didn't sign into Refinitiv. I don't store any data. All the queue systems are 100% real time. So when I entered the symbol DAO, queue check that I am logged into Refinitiv or not. Earlier it used to be called Reuters. It saw I was not logged in, so it, it is automatically signing me in, retrieving data about the stock, DAO, D-O-W, retrieve some basic data first. Now it is retrieving peer stocks. After retrieving the peer stocks, it will carry out a scorecard analysis of all the stocks. I already have the industry commodity chemicals. So I could look up the industry rotation from QH using these gear icons. Let me do that. Now it is going to transfer control from Q Vital to QH.
I am traveling now, running all these programs. Also, Zoom meeting from a small laptop, so the response time is a bit slower. Please bear with me. I like to do all these live sessions using true live system so that you can see how the different systems work together. While it is doing that, why don't I look at some of the stocks that I shared earlier? One was bio. Bio was a biotech stock that I shared. I think I shared it somewhere here as a pullback setup. Let's check that out from the forum. If I had shared it in the forum, that is saganandi.com. I shared those ideas under this category, 360 degrees trading techniques and ideas using Q systems. I always shared them before knowing the result. Let me check if I shared bio here or did I share it on YouTube or Twitter? Bio, yes, I shared it 10 days ago. Let's look at it. By looking at the charts and Q analysis, when I shared them first shows how powerful the systems are. 10 days ago, I shared bio. I identified it from Q Elite Sonar. You could also identify it from Q Global Finder using bottom up or technical analysis first, technical scan. Here I attach the snapshot of Q Elite Sonar that is running on TradeStation radar. It showed that Bio had a possible pullback setup. The bullish flow was there. It was in a confirmed uptrend. Price was above both yellow and white direction lines. And those lines were also going up. Traffic light was also bullish. So technically, first I found it from Sonar. And what I was mentioning just now, I like to buy stocks only if the industry is strong. And I am a big fan of turnaround candidates. This stock, this stock's industry was a clear turnaround candidate. From the color coding, you can instantly know that it was weaker earlier and right on the day, when I shared it on 8th April using real time, real time, not end of day, real time industry rotation analysis right on that day as of about 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I found the industry to be very strong. One of the strongest with score of 143 out of 147 industries that are there in the QH for USA market. So the industry allowed me to buy turnaround candidate for industry. And I mentioned also, I like to buy stocks that are fundamentally strong. How? Either in terms of valuation or in terms of earnings growth in the last quarter. In this case, it had both under valuation as well as earnings growth. These are what I call star candidates. It had revenue growth as well. Relatively, the industry was strong. We saw that from QH. And here from the pie chart, you can see in itself also 84% of the 81 PR stocks in this industry, they were up on that day. How did the chart look like? This is the standard at a glance chart. The weekly was starting to go up. The backdrop color was bullish. Daily very nicely bounced from a series of memory trend line support. Went above the yellow direction line. However, that candle had an upper tail. 
next day traffic light color turned red and very next day when i shared it it was again going up from the yellow direction line it regained the yellow direction line and it was already in an uptrend with higher high high low that was what confirmed it as a pullback candidate and that was when i shared it and how is it looking like now let's have a look i shared the trade idea on this day stop would be just below the recent low you could put stop just below the red candle entry price should be here after that price has steadily gone up by the time it came to the upper boundary level the risk distance was covered and using q guideline you could book at least partial profit and as i mentioned earlier market is bullish so no reason to book full position profit this stock is also looking bullish both in weekly daily you could continue to hold partial position with trailing stock yet another time you could buy the stock at a lower price point not after it is already high above the upper boundary level not after it is already overbought for many days shown by the stretch indicator let me see if q vital and h completed the calculations and displaying back to dow d o w i saw it has excellent seasonality i didn't check its fundamentals before i'm doing it live with you and we see it is undervalued has some earnings growth not high but if you compare that earnings growth with previous quarter's earnings growth it is accelerating in fact it is improving from minus 130 to minus 45 to plus 3 so it is certainly accelerating for three quarters in a row and it is undervalued the industry was strong friday 76% of peer stocks went up in commodity chemicals how is the industry that we can check from q edge but i also point out one thing that this stock is also paying a Decent dividend of four point three percent. This is earnings season, so you may note the earnings dates. Next earnings is on twenty second April. How is the industry commodity chemicals? Commodity chemicals is bullish for a long time. It weakened in the middle and it is gaining strength again. The pace column five day period is showing it is accelerating. how did i get to this commodity chemicals industry rotation score card i did that using the gear buttons from cube hyta so we started with seasonality i saw dow has very good seasonality for april 100% times it was up then i looked at its fundamentals undervalued with accelerating earnings growth looked at industry rotation is bullish improving now let's look at the breakdown of the seasonality using seasonality tool the current version that is released and while it is retrieving data for dow again connecting with refinitiv let's check out the stocks technicals dow technically we don't have a buy setup the weekly is going up for many weeks now the current week's candle has bearish color backdrop color is bearish the weekly candle shape is mixed in the daily it is not in an uptrend anymore it is moving sideways price is supported by trend line support and at the top there is a watermark resistance 
it is in the middle of the sideways range. That is a no trading zone. That is why for swing trading, Dow doesn't have any technical setup right now. That is fine. Let's complete the analysis with seasonality. This is Dow seasonality. It doesn't have a lot of history. Two years data is only there. And last year it went up by 25%. The year prior to that, it went up by 9.8%. This year, so far, it is up by 1.1%. And we can see this stock has bullish seasonality in June, September, November, as well as December. So it, once we know that, what can we do? How can we use it for trading? We may wait for price to pull back and then start to go up again, looking for a technical setup. Which of these one, two, three, and four, 100% bullish periods are most attractive that we can find out from average when up percentages. We can see November had the biggest move, 11.12 percentage. September also had a decent move, 8.3%. So it was always bullish and average move up by 8% in a month. In September, average move up by 11.1% in November. Those are the times we may look for bullish trades again if we are using seasonality. And then again, I will look for the industries to be strong, fundamentals to be strong, and technicals to be strong. That was Dow, and we looked at another stock. Let's look at another stock that was Fox, FOXA. The system is a bit slow. FOXA, and I'm also typing slowly. It should be FOXA. Dot o. While it is retrieving fundamental data, let's check its technicals. We'll buy only if technical industry strength, fundamentals all are aligned. Seasonality we saw is already very bullish, 100% of the times. FOXA. Here the technicals are more interesting. It was going up, then had a sharp pullback. This pullback could be associated with the large family farm, family fund, family office fund that got bankrupt some time ago. This sharp drop could be associated with that. Earlier it was in an uptrend, it pulled back, and now it is gradually starting to move up with many doji candles. It has very nice trend line support in the daily. If it now gives a bullish shape candle with a hollow body, maybe with a long lower tail, long lower tail, a bullish shape. There are many bullish shapes possible. If we have such a bullish shape candle, 
that may give a low risk buying opportunity. So we may keep an eye on that. But before that, let's complete the analysis. Fox fundamentals are here. Fundamentals are good enough for Q traders to buy. The valuation here you can see, valuation is medium. Our earnings growth is positive and again it is accelerating. From zero earnings growth two quarters ago to 42% one quarter ago to 60% in the latest quarter. So accelerating earnings growth. Let's wait for the system to look up the industry. While doing that, let me again switch to another stock that I shared earlier. That was a gold miner, SSRM. Many people were bearish on gold miners and gold for good reason, because gold was underperforming for a long time. However, using Q systems, you know that I and you and all Q traders are able to buy the stocks using different kinds of setups. Not always we have to wait for breakouts, not even for trend following. We have trend reversal setups and right at this point, my system is, okay, I have control. Right at this point, it had a box set up in the daily chart. There was probably some trend line resistance. However, it had very nice support from watermark level in both daily and weekly. The weekly bounced up. The daily also bounced up with bull release signal, bullish flow, bullish pressure here. So looking at those, I took a long position in SSRM, its fundamentals were great. I shared that publicly. And when price came to this area, started to move sideways, I had my risk distance covered. And I mentioned that time I booked my profit. However, prices continue to go up. The weekly and daily both are bullish. It is okay to book full profit if you want to. In this case, looking at the sideways move, I booked full profit. However, it would also be okay to book partial profit and leave the rest with trailing stop. Both are okay. In any case, target is to cover the risk distance at least and that was achieved in this trade also. The more you study the ideas that I share, the more you practice with Q systems, you will get more and more comfortable with taking all the kinds of Q setups, not only breakouts, not only trend following, but catching double bottom using box setup like in this case or using the other setups like bounce and headwind as well. That was SSRM gold miner that I shared earlier that made a nice profit. Bio I shared earlier that made a nice profit. Let's go back to Q Edge. We were looking at Fox A broadcasting great seasonality technicals are getting ready for a low risk entry point fundamentals are good enough for buying just waiting for broadcasting industry and qa is taking long time okay it is about to come back is it Never mind. If it takes too long time, I will not wait for it. You may check out the broadcasting industry scorecard. And if that is bullish, you may keep an eye on the stock. If okay, it is broadcast, it has come back. No, the industry is not so strong. Not okay. I, I should take it back. In Q technique, there are two ways to look at strength. One is to look at the score at the immediate right that is the recent day or recent days some people prefer two days but i like to use the one day or 
during market hours, I like to look at the real time. It is not the strongest, relatively speaking, when you look at the Friday score, because the color is not cyan. However, I mentioned that is one way of looking at industry strength using Q scorecard. The other way is to see whether it is accelerating. And the acceleration is shown by cyan color under the paste columns, and this industry is accelerating. So that allows me to buy. So Fox A, Fox FOXA, the ticker symbol, that allows, that is, we can buy that based on industry acceleration. And if I wanted to check the industry percentage move, one thing I sometimes look at when the relative score is weak is that, is the industry still going up? Yes. On Friday, relatively it was weaker compared to other industries, but it still went up by a decent 0.5% for the whole industry. So that allows us to buy. So we looked at Fox A from different angles. The last angle I'd like to look at is when we checked its 100% seasonality, was it based on only two years data like we saw in case of the last stock or is it relying on longer period? If it is relying using or having, if it has then Q seasonality will use it. If it has many years of data, then the seasonality analysis is more reliable. It's an ordinary share. Okay, this, this symbol also doesn't have a lot of data, but you can see in, okay, it has retrieved the data, not a lot of data, but it has strong bullish seasonality in April. After that in, November, then in December. Again, it doesn't have enough historical data. The enhanced version that I will share, I will add a way to look for stocks which has enough historical data. In any case, I demonstrated how to use Q seasonality and not to use it alone, but to combine the seasonality data with fundamental scorecard with industry rotation information and then also using a technical setup using Q charts. As you can see, though the market is overbought, the ideas that I shared, most of them are continuing to make profit. Again, showing that whatever be the market condition, if one is disciplined and using robust systems, we should be able to make some money from the market. I'll not spend more time today. Let's end today's session here. I think I'll be back home by next Wednesday. I didn't conduct the Wednesday live market meet for two weeks, I think, because I'm traveling. I hope to start, restart the Wednesdays market bit also from the coming Wednesday. I will notify you using Twitter and you will come to know from YouTube if you are subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot for joining. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.